What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, it's dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're engaged, and we like to get scared together. Yeah. Yay. And today <laughs> we have, I'm so excited about this, guys, Heather Langenkamp. Hey, everybody. Hey. Oh, this is so fun. We've already just been sitting here chatting, and it's it's so nice. I was like, oh, yeah, we have to actually record. <laughs> <laughs> well, we met, like, we met before I even knew who you guys were. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, like, you even have a fan picture over there of us. <laughs> you just pretended you were these, like, meek little fans. <laughs> but then you're these superpowers <laughs> on, on YouTube. So I'm really, I'm excited to be here no, today. We're like, we're, <laughs> we're dweebs who just happen to have people who like to listen to us talk but about But should we tell them about stuff? The other time that we met? Yeah, that was Oh, so yeah, fun. for sure. Because uh, I think I... Didn't I mention it in a video? You mentioned it, and I know I was tweeting about it. Um, we did an escape room yeah. with Heather, and it was so fun. <laughs> that it's, it's sad because... And I get why you obviously can't film inside of escape rooms, because then... It gives away all the fun Right, parts. but I wish we had... Wish we had it. Well, but it was so the fun. truth needs to be told that she was the one who got us out Chelsea, of the escape room. If, yeah. if Chelsea wasn't there, I think just James and I would have been just, just spinning in circles, like, what do we do next? But you're just a real expert. It's she's I so love. Good. She's yeah. really good. I love escape did, rooms. I forget. With that one, did we have to use any hints, or did we avoid I don't, that? I don't think we. Used I don't think we used. Hints. Okay. No, maybe we used one hint. I know that we're like very anti-hint, but I know possibly used one. <laughs> yeah. But still, it was a hard one. And it was real good. And that was a uh, fox in a box. Fox in a box, which was that room was so well done. It was their Zodiac Killer room. Yes, yeah. that was so cool. Yeah, and we were all chained to the wall at one point, <laughs> yeah. which is the way you start the. We really <laughs> recommend Fox in a Box here yeah. in LA. It's fantastic. And doesn't Lisa work there? Lisa. Yeah, Wilcox? so Lisa Wilcox, she's one of their program managers, and she tries to get people. You know, think of cool ideas to getting people there. So they had this idea of Celebrity Wednesday, and yeah. and so I was the first guinea pig, of course, because. I told Lisa yes, <laughs> and it was the best night of my life. I, I'm so because I've been trying to drag people. I have literally been trying to drag people to this escape room for a couple of years. Yeah, and then when Lisa was like, "Oh yeah, you can go for free, and we'll give you a day when you can just come by yourself," so oh. I've now done I think four of their rooms. Oh, cool. Ooh, really? So what one's cool. the hardest one? I think the Zodiac Killer. Yeah. Zodiac was, the was pretty tough. It was, it was hard. Good. It was yeah. Really, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. really hard. Oh. Well, we're always down to do escape rooms. Yeah. Like, I, I want to do every escape room that exists. <laughs> yeah, I think I mentioned it in the Cabin in the Woods kill count because I oh, good. I went into a lot of behind the scenes, so oh, you're all over yeah. that video. Oh, you God, isn't that a great movie? I, I have to it say so it's much. one of my favorite movies. Yeah, of it's the, so good. Of the aughts. The, yeah. what, what year did that come out? Uh, it was filmed in 2009, but came out in 2011. Right. Oh, that's right, because it had that two-year yeah. Yeah, unfortunate and you know it burial. With, you know that delay happened because you have Chris Hemsworth Worth, who is like in a not even the lead he's just he's in it like yeah. he's just a guy and yeah, then, just came, a then Thor happened and then Cabin in the Woods it's just it's so bizarre I love that yeah weirdness I love it <laughs> everyone has done a horror movie that's yep. right yeah. <laughs> yeah well that movie had so many interesting elements but I remember the gal I don't remember her name who was the blonde girl who you know she t mm. at the beginning of the movie she turns blonde and then mm -hmm. she becomes kind of the ditzy blonde yeah. but she really starts out the movie I mean, you don't see her brunette, but she's like, yeah, I just dyed my hair mm -hmm. blonde. And, and But she, I remember they had a hard time finding that part because no one wants to be the ditzy blonde who gets killed off in the first part of the movie. Mm. It's yeah. now such a trope that... <laughs> actresses are like I don't want to be that girl I don't want to be the Amanda Amanda oh. Wiss I, I, <laughs> yeah. because you know those are the girls that get killed off and then you know so you can see how something like Nightmare on Elm Street has had this lasting effect on what people think about the roles of these characters that's interesting do you you know having obviously like you're in Nightmare on Elm Street and you kind of have seen the shift between the types of women that are in horror, like, was there a shift in terms of the types of roles actresses desired? Like, was there really in real time, like, a oh, I don't want to be that joke now. Almost. Right, I don't want to be the, the cliche blonde girl who gets yeah. killed. Well, I know that when I took the part, I didn't even know there was a type, mm -hmm. you know, that virginal brunette, like, that wasn't the type yet. It mm -hmm. was just, oh, this is the lead girl of this of this screenplay where she gets, you know, her friends get killed off by this, you know, 
finger knives murderer. I mean, it was so <laughs> unsophisticated. And I thought to myself at the time, well, doing a small horror movie that no one's going to see is never going to really affect my career. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, that's kind of my attitude. Like, just do it to make some money, and then nobody will ever see it. Because right. You know, the only way to see a movie was at the movie theater. Mm-hmm. And I figured nobody would see this movie because it was a horror movie. So I was banking on it not really being that popular just and hoping like that I could go on with my career, you know, like doing straight, regular parts, oh my God. you know. When did you realize that it was like out of control? Like It got big pretty fast, <laughs> yeah. right? Well, I mean, it really was more like three or four years later when, okay. when Nightmare 3 came out. Mm. That's when I knew that it was a really big movie and it's been 30 years 35 years where we got into this point and it was a very gradual thing it wasn't overnight it wasn't like in a matter of even three years it was more like 10 years 15 years when people started talking about it in these terms mm-hmm. that we hear it now that's probably discussed. better though or like easier to cope with maybe than like uh because i think overnight. of like the, yeah. the kids who were in, in it where it was like an overnight thing all right. of a sudden they're mm-hmm. giant stars i guess it depends on what your goal is i mean i think i would have <laughs> liked to have more of that fiery hot like superstardom for a second because I think it would have given you a lot of freedom to pick roles that you would really want to play because you know that comes with that I always felt like I was struggling always struggling actress always trying to get the next part always waiting to see what was around the corner and not knowing what it would be so you know in that respect I've gained a healthy respect for like what success means in Hollywood and and in some ways I still am hoping to find it in, mm-hmm. in different ways. Which is so weird because, uh. yeah, like Nightmare on Elm Street is obviously one of the biggest horror movies. And it's not like, because uh, we were talking about how uh, you're not like the final girl in like Friday the 13th. Uh, Alice, I think Adrian right. King. Mm-hmm. Who, Adrian. Yeah, who's who's in the first and like the beginning of the second. But like, it's kind of a forgettable character. It's another victim. But Nancy is such an iconic character. Right. I, I think... Uh, I think I agree with people who think that the first, third, and then New Nightmare are just a really good trilogy mm. of the Nightmare movie. I mean, I love the whole Nightmare series. They do make a great trilogy. But they though. make a great they make trilogy. They make a great trilogy. Yeah, especially for you you as like a, a character arc and like an actor arc. And yeah, so- I mean, I couldn't ask for a better character than Nancy. I, I, and that's one of the things that I always fall back on is, you know, if I am feeling a little low, like, gosh, I really wish I worked, you know, had a a job, you know, this year. <laughs> um, I think, you know what, but you played Nancy, you know, and mm-hmm. what else can you ask for? You really can't ask for anything else. And I'm, that's why, and I just feel so lucky. I really mm-hmm. do. Yeah, because yeah. so many actors, like, don't even get that opportunity. You don't you know? get that, mm-hmm. especially a character that's going to live on, mm-hmm. cr- definitely will live on in movie. Uh, you know, people will be seeing Nightmare on Elm Street for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it is, because I, I was just talking about this with a friend, the idea of everyone in Hollywood, you can look at the most successful person, but even when you get to the top, you still are terrified. And just, you know, because even it's like, okay, I have everything, but it's like, oh, and I'm I'm afraid that I'll let it go. Or I'll let it go, or, or I won't, or people won't like me suddenly. You know, yeah. It's, it, yeah. it's a great thing to find success but it's still you like, guys must live through that all the time sure. oh, yeah, yeah all especially the time. right now i'm do like i'm easing back on the releases for the channel and like some people are like you're gonna kill your channel you're never gonna come back from it it's like i i already feel that fear thanks don't like, let yeah. me i'm already <laughs> awake at night thinking about that yeah. yeah no but you have to uh yeah you know i've learned oh, i mean i'm old so i've learned a lot and and in the end of the day, you really have to examine what you want mm-hmm. out of your own life, you know, mm-hmm. because Hollywood's a perfect place where you can start listening to other people too much. You can let their desires become your desires. You can let what you, you know, what other people expect of you become your own expectations, which, you know, that's why I think you hear stories of like actors who act up on stage or like are late or a lot of it has to do with like I just don't want you to tell me what to do Mm -hmm. you know I just don't want to be told every day what I have to wear what I have to you know say what I have to do and there's these little ways in a in a life where you can kind of rebel yeah and I can totally see some of this behavior that you're like oh what a jerk you know it's like no he's really just trying to say I'm my own guy Mm -hmm. or I'm my own lady and um, I kind of want to do things my own way and and it's it's a really hard thing to be 
where people have expectations of you, Mm -hmm. you know, and you might want to grow up, you know, you might want to do something else. And, and, you know, it's really tough. Yeah. That's why I love though, that, especially since you're the actor who played Nancy, it makes complete sense for me that Nancy then went on to just like, you know, I'm going to do makeup. (laughs) I'm going to get really into that side of it. Like the technical, because that's such a Nancy, like if Nancy worked in the industry, that would make (laughs) maybe, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, going over that decision, (laughs) what happens sometimes I think in your life is like, say you meet a guy and then you're like, okay, I've got to re I got to refigure out my life now cuz I have this guy that I want to be part of his life and he wants to be part of my life so what are we going to do? Oh, and now we're going to have kids, you know, and then at at so many different junctures you have to make a left or a right turn instead of going straight ahead where you think you're going to go. Mm-hmm. And that's happened to me so many times in my life that um you know, I once I've made that left turn, I just really go full throttle. I don't I try not to look back over my shoulder and go, what would have happened if I had done that? Or what would have happened if I had done that? Because then I'll just spend all my time, you know, wasting time thinking about that. So when I met Dave Anderson, you know, he, I was still fully acting and having my career. And then he, um, you know, he got this movie on Dawn of the Dead up in Toronto and he was going to be up there for six months. The the remake? The, the remake Snyder? was Zack Snyder. Yeah. And so, you know, I thought, well, I can stay at home with the kids and, you know, be by myself or I can make a job for myself up in Canada. And so I ended up being I'm more like the producer of the special effects. So when you think of, you know, you have this giant studio and in there we moved into an old, kind of like an old CVS or an old drugstore oh, that yeah. was this mall was going to be destroyed mm-hmm. and they're about you know three months away from destroying it and so Zack Snyder and the whole company moved into the mall oh that's cool and we that really created so all the sets were in yeah. the mall but also <laughs> our special effects makeup shop was in the mall so we just <laughs> we put up some walls so I could have an office and you know budgeting and figuring out how to make all of those zombies I mean there were hundreds of mm-hmm. them we had a very limited budget so that's kind of my job I I sit and I'm like okay we're gonna need to have you know 15 guys and they're gonna work you know this many hours and we have to do the insurance and the workman's comp so like I do the most boring things <laughs> but I really like it <laughs> yeah I like, it's yeah. so necessary I really like mm-hmm. it and you know you have to go into the accountants and say yeah we spent too much money last week or they're like, what do you think this day is going to cost? You know, with 45 makeup artists. And I'm like, it's going to be a lot, you know? <laughs> so I always would help David not have to deal with that. And because he hates dealing with that. Yeah. So, but as a result, like I've learned so much and I've worked with so many incredible makeup artists. And, um, but it's always the way, you know, I always take that side of the business and he always does all the creative side of that. And so as a result, like I've, I've been left sometimes feeling like I really need to do some creative stuff. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I still try to get out there acting. I still, um, you know, I write a lot. And and then, you know, I decided to make a short film last year. Yeah. And I've decided, you know, going forward, like this is really what I want to pursue. I really love making movies and writing stories. And... And I'd love to act in them too, but maybe that's too much, you know, like, that, yeah, you know, it's a lot to <laughs> yeah. take on because I think once you're looking at everybody on the set and at all the stuff, you wouldn't be able to concentrate on your character enough to make it really like what I would expect an actor to do on set. So I wouldn't be able to live up to my own expectations as an actor. I think if I was directing as well. So. Yeah. It's hard to get out of your head. Yeah. I even hard. experienced mm-hmm. that a little bit as like when I'm hosting stuff, cause I know that I'm going to be editing it later. So sometimes <laughs> I, I'm thinking like an mm-hmm. editor as right. I'm hosting. And so and you're not as, as maybe uh, like in the moment or yeah, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So, you know, going down these different paths, you know, I've always like when I was, just a stay-at-home mom, which I was for several years, man. I mean, I was like helping, you know, coach AYSO and, you know, making cookies for the parties and <laughs> being on the PTA. I mean, that was really important to me to do it full on. And now that I don't, you know, have to be that kind of a mom, I, I'm like, I have this real burning desire to 
you know, do a horror movie and do things that have been in my head for many, many years now. Yeah. That's so good. That like, yeah. But I'm really cool. afraid of you reviewing my movie. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're I'm nice. Gonna, no. Yeah, you're nice, but I just don't have enough dead people. <laughs> <laughs> That's more of my audience being critical about that. I'm like, I'm cool well, with that. I mean, yeah. So I did this short film last year called Washed Away, and it's it's a ghost story, and um, and I wanted to do a movie that was like at the flip side of horror. Like we all know that we love to see people get killed in horror movies. Right. But what's the flip side of that? Well, it's like somebody's dying. You yeah. Know? And, um, we're all so afraid of death and we're all really unsure of what it's going to be like. Right. Mm-hmm. We all have our own ideas of what is it after death? So I decided to make a movie that was, I call it the flip side of horror. It, it deals with death. It deals with what happens after you die. And it deals with kind of, could it, could there be ghosts? Like, could they come after us? Could, could we still like have this communication with, un, with the dead? And so I deal with a lot of those themes. And, you know, it's a first attempt. I, I look at it like you were like, oh, maybe that, I should have done another take there. Oh. You know, I should have taken another moment. But I had a really, um, I just like said, I have this budget. That's all I'm going to spend. I basically saved up my money from these con- conventions that I go to. Mm-hmm. I put it in a little envelope and I was like, okay, this is what I have. And, and I was able to keep it under my budget and hire some great people. So what I wanted to say is that starting today, everybody can see it on Vimeo. Yes. Oh, awesome. And um, yes. you can probably look it up. It's Washed Away by Heather Lang. I'll link to it. Yeah. The- yeah by Heather away. Lang and Camp. And mm-hmm. I really would like everyone to watch it and and enjoy it. Just enjoy yeah. the the idea that it's, you know, a beginning filmmaker. <laughs> 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 you know, trying to get across an idea about, you know, this horror world that we live in and and a softer side of it definitely yeah mm-hmm. and i like that that feels very intertwined to like you know meditating more so on on death and taking that more seriously as a subject matter i think is such a good counterpart to having fun with the the deaths in yeah. movies and ha- because right. to me i think you need both of those to exactly. just cope as a, as a human it's you know like death can be unpredictable it can be you know Random, well, and, yeah, and when you poke fun at it, and when you look at like a it's Nightmare universal. on Elm Street, yeah. it kind of takes a lot of the fear, and that uh, we're so scared, we can be about what's going to happen at mm-hmm. the end. And a horror movie kind of like throws that all up and just smashes it to smithereens, right? Mm-hmm. It's like it just puts it in your face and just shoves it down your throat, like this is what's going to happen, or you know, mm-hmm. if you're walking down a dark alley in the middle of the night and there's a guy with a glove walking behind you, like ah, and by by really diving into those scared feelings, I think you come out like a little like more accepting maybe or braver. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Or even just more able to handle the idea that this is all going to end someday. Yeah. yeah. I think it helps that it's so, you know, especially with slashers and especially with Freddy, the deaths themselves are so absurd that it's mm-hmm. like hard to be afraid of. Right. Them. I think the, the only death I've seen in a horror movie recently that has like scared me was I was rewatching Gerald's game mm. and when he has just like a heart attack and he, yeah. you watch him like try to like oh, try work to br- his yeah, way breathe. through it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then he just claps. I'm like, that could happen. Like that could happen to me like right now. And like that made me scared. But Johnny Depp being sucked into a bed and like a blood uh, guy. Yeah. So it's just like, oh, a cool effect. <laughs> so I started my journey being a director with this short film. And I was like, this is fantastic. I just, I just really want to continue doing this. And here I have David Leroy Anderson, you know, who wants to do anything he can to, to help. So we're going to, um, we're going to make a feature film through our makeup effects studio this year. And AFX, um, AFX is going to be probably the producer. Oh, cool. Per se. Will yeah. that be a first for AFX? Yeah, it'll be the first, our first feature out of AFX studio. Oh, nice. cool. And it'll be very heavy in makeup effects, obviously. And, uh, it has an ocean theme, just like Washed Away. And okay. So Ooh, we're okay. calling it the Dead Sea. Nice. And there'll be lots of dead creatures. There you go. I don't want to call them <laughs> zombies because they're not zombies. They are dead. They're not okay. the undead. They are definitely dead. Mm. Got it. And they live in the ocean. Ooh, ocean scares me so. Ocean stuff. Yeah, ocean. Yeah. This will vary. And it's it's... 
I learned a lot about shooting outside on the sand because that's <laughs> where Washed Away takes place. And it's so difficult. Mm-hmm. You have the sand. It's like for your bad for your camera, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's just the basic. But then, you know, the light is constantly changing. The ocean is constantly changing. Everything is constantly moving. You know, Jaws is actually my favorite horror movie oh, because yeah. I just am, like I love. Um, yeah, I just love the idea of the creatures of the sea yeah, yeah. like deep ocean water is terrifying all the today. ocean mm-hmm. scary movies yeah are terrifying yes. that new one underwater is out but <gasps> oh, we yeah, still we need to see yes yeah. i have to see that too yeah. and it looks terrifying yes. <laughs> heard there's so. some creepy creepy critters right in that, which i'm excited <laughs> about also if you need people to die in your movie yeah, no, down. you guys are down. <laughs> you look very fair, though. You're going to have to be out in the sun a little bit. I'll have to get you a big hat. Dude, I do. I, I just she burn. Yeah. Yeah, if you need Chris. someone to play a lobster, I'll be the lobster. <laughs> <laughs> we can put you, like, you can be maybe a comedic character who's, like, covered. Like, you see people yes. at the beach like this who are, like, in their, like, That's long sleeve before, shirts yeah. and the big hats. We'll make sure That's you're me. covered. <laughs> yeah. You know, David's designed so many incredible characters. He designed the Red Devil and mm-hmm. Scream Queens Scream and Queens, Green yeah. Meanie mm-hmm. and, and uh, you know, in Hotel, uh, the Bed Man and all these, like the Addiction Demon, like all these great characters. And I thought, now it's time for him to design something that not only he can, like, really benefit from it, but also we can, in, you know, just entertain people with the, some of his designs that are in the deep recesses of his mind yeah <laughs> like something that's truly I never th- I never thought about that how like if you're designing characters you're doing makeup but you're you know you're doing them for a studio production or another director they're, they're never truly they're yours. not yours exactly right. I never thought about they that. never are yours and so this is something that we've wanted to is create a character that's ours that you know that's hopefully as great as some of these other ones but that can really like enter the imagination of people and and sit there for a while so yeah if it's anything like the merman from having <laughs> oh it, gosh wouldn't it be great to best. say oh yeah we can sell these little mermans Aww. you know it'd be so great we, own but we love every character from cabin in the woods i mean we love david actually applied the um the faceless ballerina that was his oh, so um, cool and we have some great photos of him that girl was so um so wonderful and patient and she <laughs> literally was blind the whole day having oh to gosh. walk around the set barely able to see in a total that total face i'm assuming mask. she just she was a dancer like yes. yeah, yeah okay and she was a beautiful dancer yeah so they practiced those dances mm-hmm. and uh High pain tolerance. That will, yeah. If you're not looking too, that will throw off your equilibrium. Yes, it will. Like doing yeah. yoga poses, do... if you close your eyes, it makes it harder. No, so. she was really coordinated That's and amazing. also able to handle. I think they probably, the day that she danced, they might have made the eye holes a little bigger for her so that she, because if she was moving, you wouldn't have noticed. Mm-hmm. But I'm not quite sure. Um, yeah, they did several dances that she you know that she participated that's in that's so cool but that yeah that movie was just amazing they shot that in vancouver so mm-hmm. yeah um they had a big studio up there a yeah. lot of canada work yeah a lot of canada work yeah, yeah i know that's, that's why you know that was a time when there were so many movies going up there but now things are coming back here mm-hmm. so you know we've been able to be in la for six years without leaving town which oh wow wow was great because our son was sick with cancer and so we had to be home and Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank goodness we were you know we had American Horror Story because that allowed us to be home and 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 take care of him but how many seasons of that show um we did six but we didn't do the whole 1984 the last season we didn't do the whole season we only did the first three episodes of that got it so yeah we got a little tired of killing gorgeous young people <laughs> like sure. i have to say like after six seasons we're like oh that's a lot of and, seasons and there's this yeah. there's a scene in the in the show if anybody's a fan of that uh but these two young kids are they're making out in bed you know and it's like they're camp counselors and we had to have them stabbed through the back of the head through the mouth of the girl and like pin them to the pillow and it was the first gag of the show that we had to make and um it was just brutal bringing in these kids because we had to we had to figure out how to get them in perfect alignment and then make this knife and like 
we had to do a whole bunch of things just to get their bodies. So we bought some Barbies. Like we were like practicing <laughs> with the Barbies. Like, how's this going to work? I you wish know? there was video footage like, of that. <laughs> it's so funny how, you know, you often, cause like, I feel like everyone, you have Barbies as a kid and I feel like I, I would like chop their hair off and every kid like mutilates or like, maybe that was just me, but maybe there's, that always, was just there's often like the idea of like the, the kid who's going to grow up to be a total psychopath. Cause they're, but it's like, no, you just see, this is yeah, the I mean, type we're, of we're real world. We're playing with Barbies exactly. a lot. Right. It's just, to kind of act yeah. out the graphic nature of this gag. So and then we're like, okay, well, we better bring in the actor and the actress. And, um, you know, they had to ha- kind of lock lips yeah. and then get stabbed. So it was very technical. And um, so you had to put, like, you basically had to, like, attach two people. Like, yes. they would have had to be, oh my God. Right. So we had a special device we made so that they were attached to the mouth, but they didn't have to be touching, okay. really. Oh, okay. And, like, kind of like something to bite on. And, mm. and that would keep their heads in the same. Uh, kind of position that they needed to be in for a minute or two right and then Mm -hmm. you know the whole gag was extremely complicated but anyway the kids who played the characters came in and they were so sweet and beautiful (laughs) and just they're so eager like they're so excited and and I think Dave and I just looked at each other like I just don't want to kill any nice kids (laughs) anymore you know sure and a lot of times you are telling them for the first time that they're going to be killed like this the one girl that got killed with the boat paddle in the boat boating shed or whatever she too was just this just gorgeous you know beautiful actress and we're kind of telling her like well you die this way and you know you're gonna have a boat paddle down your throat oh my God. and um <laughs> it was just heartbreaking sometimes <laughs> yeah. because you know they were like oh my god i'm this is my first job on the ryan murphy show i'm like this is like it yeah mm-hmm. you know and then you're like oh Okay, like this now is we it. We have to murder you. We have to murder you. <laughs> and after six years, it did kind of start to wear on us. Oh, a little interesting. Bit. Yeah. There must be you know. such a psychological difference between designing creatures and then designing gory mm. death. It, it's true. And um, yeah, it's really two different balls of wax. Like, I never really thought of it that way. But yeah, the designing of the characters is a totally, like, it's so exciting Mm -hmm. because you're often using illustrators who are bringing you incredible imaginative ideas it's very artistic and you're subtly changing this and that but then when you're doing gore like we all know like it's just getting bloodier and bloodier right Mm -hmm. it's not going back no (laughs) so so like you see what you've done in the past and you're like okay now it has to go even further Mm -hmm. and I think I'm at the point where I just don't want to see it go further. I, I'm, mm-hmm. I think we're there. Yeah. But I don't know what else. <laughs> like, the what world. else can, can we... we do? And Hostel, to me, was like the first movie where you're like, you can do that? Like <laughs> That was such a was... big horror. Like, in yeah, retrospect, Hostel that was such a yeah. There were so yeah. many taboos that we didn't even really know existed in horror. Like, that eyeball you never stab out. a baby, right? You know, it's like, oh, oh yeah. there it is. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. And, yeah, all the lines yeah. that we think you can't cross. And now then, someone but, will. The, the the great horror directors and producers, they're actually, they are always pushing that envelope, right? They're always pushing it. So I don't see us going backwards, really. But no. then you see, like, you know, a movie like Parasite, where people really appreciated that it was so pulled back, mm-hmm. you know? There were some... You know, the places where it could have gone kind of crazy, yeah, but they didn't. But it's yeah. weird, though, how affected I was by the fast forward like a minute. If you haven't seen Parasite, um, <laughs> it's it's amazing. I'm glad we watched it before we yeah. recorded this. Uh, the moments where in that movie you do get some gore. Yeah, it's a. Like, I was so affected by it, even though it's not the goriest gore I've ever seen. No. It's just so stark. But it was it was violent. Yes. yes. Yeah. Really, it's but like real. Fall. It's the build up to mm-hmm. yeah. it. And right. like that was such effective gore for me rather than, you know, if the whole movie's a bloodbath, I'm less, mm-hmm. you know, mentally shaken by it. Um, but yeah, that's why I think like speaking of just the generation of Hostel and like those movies and that wave, I think that's why right after that, and it's kind of where we're at now, I think we kind of evolved to, there's so much more supernatural horror mm. and you have creatures and more metaphorical stuff like the Babadook and yeah. 
you know, I think that's why it was so huge because it is not particularly gory. I mean, the beginning of that first one is. <laughs> but... Well, you know, you truly can almost call it a PG thirteen, like almost, and, and, yeah. and, and mm-hmm. get kids in there, and they're not like kids not are sleeping. super into it, yeah. yeah, and they're not, <laughs> and, you know. It, I mean, I'm sure they're losing sleep over it, but it's like as a mom, you hate it when your kid has a vision in their head that's really gory and bloody that they're never going to get out of their mind. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. some of the slasher films, you know? Yeah, it's so weird how we both dressed as Pennywise. I was the new one and he (laughs) was the old one for a convention. Yeah, yeah. I think I saw a picture of that. Yeah, oh my gosh. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. so we went as them to a convention and I was amazed at how many little kids were running up to us like we were Mickey Mouse at Disney. I was like, Pennywise. Like, like, oh like seven year olds, God. six year olds, probably just like Pennywise. They were so pumped to me. I don't know Pennywise. if they'd seen the movie or just like I the remember marketing. One little but... kid was like, I watched your movie, and I'm just like, Oh man, thanks. <laughs> wow. I watched your movie. You know, it was so sweet. I just was not excited. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Well, that's oh, well, you'll have to put those costumes on again. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I hope it you takes still have a them. Lot of so work. I'm sure. Yeah, a I know. A lot of grease paint. It takes <laughs> yeah. so, long, so much baby powder because white makeup yeah, because is so is the hardest. It's hard to make it look good. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I didn't realize how because I was streaky, like, oh, it gets all streaky, yeah. and then yeah, it's so hard. Oh, I we've kind of moved on from the topic, but I do have a question about uh, one when and how did you meet David? Oh, so I had been you know in Nightmare on Elm Street. And after that, um, I was invited to a rap party, maybe a few months later, called Serpent in the Rainbow. Okay. And, okay. And, West and, Craven. and Craven, David, yeah. David's dad had been the guy who made all the special effects makeup for Serpent in the Rainbow. And he had sent David as the set department head. Mm-hmm. And David was young. I mean, he was probably 23 when he got that department head job, wow. which is really young. Yeah. But his dad said, you know, you're going to Haiti, so... I don't want to go. <laughs> What's his dad's name again? Uh, Lance Anderson. Lance, that's right. Yeah. It was Lance Anderson Makeup Designs. And he had mm-hmm. done Captain EO and done <gasps> The Crow. Yeah. And he oh does. He did a lot of 70s and 80s horror. Mm-hmm. But on Serpent in the Rainbow, he did not want to go down to Haiti to shoot it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So he sent David. And so David got really, you know, kind of, what do you call it? Baptism by fire, literally yeah. down there. And became good friends with Wes and... Um, then when they got back, they had a rap party. And it just so happened that one of my friends from Oklahoma who, you know, worked for a casting director, she said, oh, I'm having this party at my house and it's a rap party for Wes's movie and I think you should come because there's this guy named David Anderson and I think you'd really like to meet him. <laughs> and so um, I'm like, great. And so I went and we met that night and yeah, I mean, it's been 30 30 years. Wow. Oh, wow. So that was uh, like early 90s? So that 80s? was, um, it was 80, like 80, 85. Okay. Probably 1985. Because I've always been interested, uh, as soon as I found this out, that he worked on Pet Cemetery. Which had Miko yeah. Hughes, right? Yes, yes. And so he would oh, do the yeah. makeup on yes. young Miko, who yes. later played your son in right. the nightmare. I'm sure you guys like. So talk. his dad also got Pet Cemetery. Yeah, and like, um, yeah. so he made all those great. I mean, really great makeup effects. Oh, I just like think that. of the ankle. Yeah, the, oh, the yeah. ankle, but Ooh. also the the character that's in the attic. Yes, in oh, the yeah. back of the spine. Yeah. yeah, she's so scary. Oh yeah, Zelda. Um, Zelda <laughs> and <right>. also. <laughs> Uh, Pascal with the head, you know, got oh, hit yeah. by the truck. Like all those really mm. iconic makeups. So David went to set on that. And we had been dating a few months by then. Oh, okay. And when I got there, he's like, come come to Maine. And um, it was in September, I remember. And and so he proposed to me in Maine. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Like on, yeah. on set or like well, during the production? Well, not on set, but on a weekend he had oh, off. Wow. That's yeah. So cool. We went up to the, they have a beautiful national park called Acadia National Park. Mm-hmm. So he had in his mind this idea that we were going to go and see sunrise on, it's called Cadillac Mountain. It's like a really famous place where you see the sunrise, I guess. <laughs> and, um, but he couldn't wait. So the night before Aww. we were going to the, you know, the, to our hike, um, he just, yeah, popped the question. That's so cool. That's so sweet. It was really fun. And then the next day when we did go to the park, we locked the keys in the car. <laughs> so we didn't get to do it. Thank God he didn't wait, you yeah. know, because then it would just been a terrible like, well, day. While we're waiting for AAA, will you marry yeah, me? Right. <laughs> so, but it was, yeah, he's, yeah, he's been such a part of my life for so long now. And uh, it's, 
it's hard to believe it, it doesn't seem like 30 years that's, that's for so, sure so it's cool that's to so meet sweet. another person who is married to someone they work with because <laughs> we're about to get married and we worked and it's just a nice i love meeting other couples that do that yeah it's very i mean cool. it's not easy i mean because you have to have these two personalities like you mm-hmm. have to have the you know the girlfriend wife personality that you know you try to you know, have fun and think about, you know, what kind of fun can we have and, and being romantic and, you know, all the things that it takes to keep a relationship going. But then at work, you're like, why did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Or, you know, you're, you're spending too much money. But. I can totally think of times where like we've been setting up the podcast and you're in that mode of like you're a film crew together and yeah. you're just, right. you're pissed that something isn't right. working right. Or like right. the lighting is weird and you can't figure out why it was fine last week. But then, you know, so you're, and then as soon as we start recording, we're like flipped yeah. into now we're a couple. Well, and- you're kind of acting together too, which is really, I mean, you're, yeah, you have it almost in three compartments that you have to kind of think about because you're working, like getting this stuff done, but then you're also doing this personality. Yeah, like the have. hosting. So you're yeah. like, I think it, <laughs> what you're doing is even like really tough. So. Yeah, but it's it's great. Yeah. No, and you uh-huh. know what? It's worth just, yeah, just stick it out. Like it, it's never the easiest thing in the world, but I do think it's the most rewarding. Like I just feel like it's the one of the biggest things I can be really proud of is that, you know, I've, I really made a commitment that I lived up to for 30 years. Yeah. And that, yeah. It becomes more something to be proud of the older you get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so in Hollywood too. And in that's Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. For sure. And that relationship is like, that's what New Nightmare is yeah. based on. Like, that's, oh, yeah. I love you know, that. I, which I, that's why I know. We have Rex here. If, if people yeah, have been watching this and are like, why is there this why dinosaur? Rex? Yeah, Rex is, gosh, he's such a good buddy. I know. Isn't he so nice? So soft. And Miko, I think, still has a copy of Rex. Really? Yeah, I think the department gave him that. And he tells, you know, Miko Hughes, like you were saying. So David worked with Miko when he was three. Yeah. Yeah. And he was such a good He's such a good (laughs) baby actor. I mean, he was just a brilliant child. Mm -hmm. And his parents, you know, they really had developed him as this great actor. I mean, it was really his mom and dad who, Mm -hmm. who gave him his first you know, clue of how to be an actor. But so he, uh, you know, worked on that. And then when I found out he was going to play my son, it was so bizarre. Yeah. And plus in Nightmare 7, the script is so bizarre anyway. Yeah, so meta and there, a number and of so levels And so that was you. another yeah. meta level that no one even knows about. <laughs> yeah. But I wish, um, I, wish, I do see Miko like once or twice a year, but. Oh, cool. At I conventions would really, or. Yeah, at conventions. And I really, yeah, he's just a really special person. Yeah. It's weird because in my head, I'm like imagining him as he's still <laughs> the little kid from, I'm like, no, no he's, he's a grown ass us. adult. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think like, you know, he's taking his career in new directions. I know he told me he was studying cinematography now. Oh, and cool. So, so we'll yeah. probably see him behind the camera too. Good. That's and, awesome. Um, I'm really hoping that he, you know, he does that because He's a really creative person, you know, mm-hmm. and has grown up in this business. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's such a crucial part to really thriving in entertainment is like knowing how to do more than one thing. Mm-hmm. Like, and liking it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and wanting to, to switching yeah. paths and stuff for yeah, sure. Yeah. Cause there was a while about five years ago that like I wanted to be an actor. So I was going to auditions and stuff and it didn't work out. But luckily, I also really loved editing and I ended up getting a job editing, which wow. kept me afloat until this took off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, you guys are just an incredible role model for so many people. Oh, and thank you. Oh. even people like me, because, you know, this new digital age came as kind of like a blow mm-hmm. to people like, because we were in our 40s mm-hmm. already when yeah. the digital world started taking over and it was really intimidating like how do I do this how do I do, like yeah how do you even do an audition on tape like that's something that we had to all learn and yeah. I still suck at it <laughs> so badly but um oh like sending an audition yeah like and it must be yeah. a totally different yeah well yeah. I, I have a, I had an audition for something I went to go visit my mom who has a she lives in France mm-hmm. so um I I was in France when I got an audition and I'm like, oh, I'll just do it from France, you know? And so I set up the lights and I'm like doing my sides and I'm trying to take it out. But I forget that their internet service is so spotty oh, no. that when I was trying to upload it, like it just took forever. So I'm like, mom, it's not uploading. She's like, well, we'll have to drive to the next town and we'll go to the internet cafe. So we like get in the car. <laughs> it's like 9 p.m. at night. We drive to the next town where they have an internet cafe and we sit in the cafe and I'm like, 
mom, it's just not uploading very quickly. It's going to be 30 minutes, you know, to get this. Up. So I only was able to upload before the internet cafe closed oh, two of the two of the you know audition pieces, and then the third one didn't make it. And so the next day, Major's like, well, they're never going to. They're never going to hire you if you only turn in two of the three. Oh, and I'm man. like, man, I tried so hard to get that into you. Right. <laughs> like, you don't go become an actor and think, I'm going to have to learn file compression. <laughs> like, yeah. Exactly. File I mean, I can barely get onto Wi-Fi if it's yeah. not my house. I mean, I don't even know how to do it at Starbucks anymore. I'm like, gosh, I'm just so It bad. is amazing how fast. Because even when we, like, when we graduated film school, like, YouTube was... as a career would not have been no. an no. option. That wasn't even that long ago. No. Like, it just it that was changed, only what so... four years ago i mean oh. when were you in <laughs> when were you in well, films sure. i graduated 2011 yeah, 20, yeah 2012 yeah so, well i think but look at what freedom it's given our industry mm -hmm. to have all these new avenues of creativity and you know there's never i mean you can never look down on something that gives all these people such a voice yeah mm -hmm. such access. i mean these voices are so important and i think it's really changing i mean it's making this business so much more wide-ranging and creative like everything in the past was kind of along a very straight and narrow path mm -hmm. that people thought was acceptable or unacceptable mm -hmm. and then you have wes craven who did something that everyone thought was just completely beyond the pale mm -hmm. and then now we can we can really it's a big tent we can we can fit so much in it and and that's why I hope people are encouraged to just do what you really feel is in your heart. Because, yeah. like, I know that a lot of people are not going to like what I put out there or they think it's stupid or whatever. But I know that for me, it's, a, it's important for me to say it. And I know that there will be somebody else out there who will respond. You yeah, know, sure. that's kind of what I always, like pat myself on the back like don't feel like you have to please everybody mm -hmm. you just have to please the people that are like you yeah, yeah. you can you, know? you can never please everybody yeah. but if you're like being true to yourself and making something that like you're proud of then it'll mm -hmm. resonate with people. right like we just interviewed radio silence who did ready or not yeah. i don't know if you saw that um, no it's, oh, it's a lot, lot of fun really yeah. good <laughs> oh yeah okay I'll... if you want a cool like she's such a in the tradition of nancy I think. Uh, oh, oh good. Yeah. she yeah, is so she is. smart and, and like she uses what she has and Ooh, it's cool. just I want to see okay, it now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, but we were talking about like they had, you know, a feature come out before they did Ride or Not that we were talking just about, you know, it got bad reviews. Mm -hmm. They would say so themselves and they, you know, but we were just like, yeah, it's when you put something out there and you have someone not like it and say mean things about it, like it hurt, like it's always going to hurt. It's always yeah. going to sting, right. but you have to just realize that it's, it's a cool thing because your work has gotten to someone who has no reason to be nice to you. So it's being seen by you somebody. Know, yes. Yeah. It's not just like your friends and oh, they great. It's, you know, but it's like, it's, it got somewhere, you know, well, I'm in the process right now of um, doing a, uh, I, once in a while, I will be on a film festival jury, mm -hmm. so I get oh, a chance. That's fun. So yeah, that would be fun. So three years ago, we started a film festival called the Women in Horror Film Festival, and it Great. takes place in Atlanta. Maybe it's the fourth year. No, I think it's the third. And so I was there at the inaugural year, and then I had to skip a year. And th this year, I'm on the jury, and we get. I think 70 films to judge. So oh it's gosh. a lot of films to watch. Are they watch. all feature length? No, no, they're okay. all, these are all shorts. Okay, that's okay. better, but still so, a lot. But mm -hmm. it's so fascinating because these are all people who just with the desire to make a film have made these movies and they're all horror movies. And the way that you get into the festival is that you have to have five of the top, like 10 positions filled by women. Mm -hmm. And so it could be, you know, as long as the, you know, producer, sound uh, mixer and lead actress and say DP were f women then it can be admitted into the festival and it's given women a, a big boost in the horror genre to just know there's a place where they can go and the women are so supportive like it shows the difference like nobody <laughs> feels like as I don't know there doesn't seem to be a sense of competition as mm -hmm. much of a sense of like you go, girl, you know, <laughs> even yeah. though it might not be the greatest movie, but everyone just admires each other so much for even doing it. Yeah. Make it. And, it's um, hard. To, that's what we always, whenever we review a movie, and even if we pan something, because yeah. we love having fun with movies that we yeah. think are, are trashy. And those I love in their own way. But 
it's, it's always like, like they made something. they made the movie we didn't they, they not finished made a movie. it yeah, yeah they finished it and then they scored it and yeah. then they yeah. no first they edited it which is hard oh yeah and yes. then they scored it and then they did the sound mixing they did all these steps and if you see how many are involved you're you have to only admire someone who actually gets it out there yeah you sticks, know? Mm-hmm. It, sticks, sticks with it the whole with way it through. and doesn't give up there's so, so many uh avenues where you can give up you know and you these film festivals and... i mean this is in atlanta on the 27th 28th 29th of february oh so that's soon. so that's coming up yeah. and if you know there's not that many places to see short films i mean you can you can go on youtube and see them there but to actually see them in a theater yeah. so mm-hmm. i've been really supporting a lot of these film festivals because you can go and sit in a theater and watch them on the big screen, even if they're only 10 minutes long. It's pretty amazing. Because when you do see them on the smaller screens, you do miss a little bit, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, some of them benefit from being seen on a big screen. Most people make their movies now to be seen on a little screen, though. So Yeah, um, yeah, that's a weird thing, too. Like, yeah, tailoring sorry. your thing for people watching it on a phone. Yeah, like, like, you can't have too much busyness. You can't <laughs> have too many characters in this shot, you know, because so you're worried that it's going to be overwhelmed by being so small. So there are advantages to seeing it on the big screen. And anyone in Atlanta on that last weekend in February will be there having a really fun time at the film yeah, festival. Oh, it's cool, so go. Yeah. You should go. Go meet I up think with you guys people. should go. Oh, I wish. I think I'll well, be recovering from a surgery. Oh, yeah. Then. He's Get having everyone. he's oh. having vocal cord surgery. He's not going to yeah. be able to talk for two weeks. For two weeks straight, I'm not going to be he's able to say He's going to have to have word. a little whiteboard to write oh, things yeah. to me. Did you get your health insurance through... Um, Covered California. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah, right. since we're work for ourselves, there's yeah, you no have employer. to have. Yeah. You have to yeah. have it through that. I was thinking, like, maybe are there any unions that cover any of these YouTube shows? God, oh, no. no. God, no. Aftra. I'm yeah. curious if like we're gonna move in that direction, but it's that's gonna be that would be a tough fight. It would be a tough fight, and who it would pay? Is. I mean, it was like. We need to well, unionize production assistants. For, like, yeah. let's do that. That should be seriously. Yeah. PAs need a union. They need a union. Mm-hmm. That's, I, hope, I, I hope more unions form in the next few years, not less. It seems mm. It seems like it's going the other way. Yeah. It's been a long downward trajectory. Yeah, yeah. I come from, so we're both from Detroit originally. So union, and, union. Oh, yeah. Dad yeah. Was my dad, like was, a my dad head, was a yeah. union Orn- president. Organizer. Like UA, yeah. Not president of UAD, but he was like a president <laughs> of his local. And wow. then he worked. Yeah, so yeah. I've just been like union strong. I, whole yeah. I know. I've been a member of a union for since I was 18. Sure, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And when people say they don't know what a union is, <laughs> I don't even, I can't even comprehend that idea. But um, yeah, unfortunately, we're not teaching our kids about unions That's yeah the thing. we demonize them and it's like but we Very have to have worker too. solidarity man yeah <laughs> it's yeah. awesome solidarity that's the word hell of the day <laughs> yes oh i also wanted to ask another tangential question but i just don't know how it'll come up organically <laughs> you also played another nancy in the nancy kerrigan nbc <gasps> oh movie my gosh, yes. where can we see this it oh my, doesn't it's seem so to exist good I you did you see it like did you kerrigan. see it no. no we can't find it yeah because we were looking so... at your imdb and james was like whoa she played nancy kerrigan and i was like oh my god they look at, without even looking at pictures of you two side by side i was like <laughs> I oh my god it was on youtube identical. now oh Someone, is it okay so it, look at it it's it's Tanya and Nancy colon the inside story. Okay. And I think that oh, you, oh my God, maybe somebody uh, yeah, can look it up. It was literally ripped out of the headlines kind of movie of the week when they made those in the olden days. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and I was working on nightmare seven and the producer, Marianne Madalena was sitting next to me and literally every tabloid is Nancy Kerrigan getting hit over the knee with mm-hmm. a stick. Mm-hmm. And she's like, Heather, I just found out that my friend is producing the Nancy Kerrigan, Tanya Harding movie, and you have to go in. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you think you can? Because I had fired my agent for some reason. I don't know. I'm like, I didn't have an agent. I'm like, can you get me in like to get a meeting or call the casting director so I can come in? And she's like, yeah, I'll, I'll call you. Uh, I'll get you a, an appointment. So I go see April Webster, who's a big casting agent, and I looked – as much like Nancy as I could possibly look. And I walked through the door and she's like, oh yeah, you uh-huh. look like her. <laughs> and so I went and auditioned and got the part and it was so much fun. And I remember my, I, I, I couldn't find a babysitter. And it was like, when, you know, that childcare nightmare where you, you can't find anybody and you know you're going to have to bring your kid along. And so I brought Atticus with me and it was the day that they um, hit me over the knee <laughs> oh with a gosh. stick. And so for like 
the next 17 years, <laughs> he would always just like ridicule me. Why? Well, I was going to ask, why? Like, did you have to do the cl- The why? Yeah. Why? Oh my it God. It was so much fun. You still got it, by it the way. It was so I heard much her. fun. I really oh enjoyed that movie so much. We got to do a lot of ice skating. Yeah. yeah. Did you have to learn and, um, that or did you already know how to ice I skate? I kind of could ice skate. I couldn't do it's any so tricks. It's so hard. <laughs> but I had a double who did oh, the God. really difficult ice God, skating. Okay. But, um, oh, it was such a fun movie to do and they did it in a super unique way it's almost like the movie reds where you see all these people on a black background being interviewed about the event Mm -hmm. and they all give their kind of opinions about nancy and then their opinions about tanya and then you see the drama unfold in these segments so it was it was really neat the way that the director it wasn't as melodramatic as yeah. I, Tanya, which I loved. Yeah, mm. I was going to say, I did that movie that when movie. that came out, cool. did that bubble up Yeah, I mean, up, I like, just loved memories. all about it. <laughs> but it, it just lent itself to this kind of high dra- dramatic kind of arch tone. Mm-hmm. And... Um, they, they they were able to make it a little bit more like a documentary. Yes, yeah, it had a documentary like a feel. So yeah. you'll find it. Tanya and Nancy, the inside story. Okay, we gotta yeah, see what's we'll on watch YouTube. That. But I had those. <laughs> it is on YouTube. Getting yeah, word from is, Alex. It is. This on is why YouTube. we have an assistant. <laughs> <laughs> um, the best part is that I had those dresses. Those, I mean, I wouldn't even call them dresses. Those skating yes. costumes. Oh, they're, um, the made skater outfits. Oh my gosh, oh. with all the sequins mm-hmm. and Bob Mackie, you know, the famous Bob Mackie who designed all of Cher's outfits when she was on the Sunny and Cher oh show. Gosh. He did all the glitzy, glamour, rhinestone <laughs> costumes of the 70s and 80s. Look up Bob Mackie. Anyway, he designed the dresses. So oh, it was cool. like... I go in for fittings. It was like such a princess oh, moment. That'd be so <laughs> so cool. princess. And I'm so glad you remembered to ask about that. Oh, for that. sure. Oh, that's yeah. such a. Well, you're really oh. going deep into my uh, very <laughs> extensive. <laughs> Scour the My IMDb. very short. Actually, I look up my IMD and I'm like, <laughs> IMDb. I'm like, God, I wish there was a, like, 10 other things on there. But. Well, you just <laughs> did Portal. That's new. Ooh, that's yeah. That's that, latest edition. Yeah, to so the IMDb. Portal. I really, yeah, that's on all the platforms now, I think. You can go. But there's. You know, Portal the video game. It's not that. Right. Yeah, it is not. <laughs> it's not science. portals yeah. with an S. It's not that. Mm-hmm. It's Portal. <laughs> and we, um, yeah, we had a really fun time shooting that because, well, Ryan Merriman, mm-hmm. who's a fellow Oklahoman, and I didn't even know that until I met him. Yeah. And he, he's just really solid and handsome and just a great actor to work with and, and a horror movie background uh, yeah final destination three oh and definitely yeah, yeah definitely so we had you know but that's what's great about these smaller budget horror films they really try to get a couple of names to you know to get their financing and all of that but that story was pretty pretty good and i liked the um well then the movie comes out and then I go to Tulsa to participate in a film festival and there's Ryan and he's there and we're sitting next to each other, like helping one of the theaters in Oklahoma um, that plays all the indie, like it's a movie theater that plays all the indie house movies and smaller films. We were both there to kind of celebrate this day. So it was nice to see him in Oklahoma and I told him I'm going to come visit him in his hometown and because he's closer you know. to uh, Oklahoma City, or yeah, he's he's south of Oklahoma City, and but it sounds like he's just got all these great friends, and oh, you know they've good. all got their pickups, and they're you know I mean he <laughs> has a pretty normal cool. life. I mean he has a pretty great, great you know hometown life there. I think. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hard to do that, you know, to to have those buddies that you just keep throughout your life. And yeah, no we matter... have a few that like we're hoping will just always be there for us because we met yeah. them in college. They live down the hall from us now, yeah. like in this oh, building. Oh, that's great. And so yeah, we're just like we'll we... slap you around a bit if your head gets too big. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you want. Yeah, we that's, talk a lot that's... about how like no matter what happens, we got to keep these people close to us because like very true. They're who we can be real with no matter what. And yeah. Be real no, with they're us. worth. They're weight in gold yeah. and um, mm-hmm. it's very true mm-hmm. same with your parents or like your sister of like, or your brothers mm-hmm. like they're mm-hmm. hopefully can stay real yeah. and let you know when you're being you know ridiculous yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well cool yeah portals available to watch everywhere I think it's on yeah it's on uh, yeah all of them. <laughs> yeah. All of them. All where, the where was that shot? Because it's, it's all oh my, at, like the one location. Is gorgeous. Yeah. Okay, so that house has been used in a lot of movies, but it's in, um, 
gosh, I think it's, I don't want to call it Eagle Rock, but it's around there. Okay. Oh, okay. It's right off the, yeah, there's two freeway. Mm-hmm. And this neighborhood was so beautiful, but that house is spooky. Just, yeah. But I just saw another movie where it's in the movie too, so they must use it for filming a lot. Mm-hmm. But yeah, really scary house. And then we also shot up in um, kind of out like past Santa Clarita, like in the way. That's where I imagine the house would be. Yeah. It's like further removed from the city, like yeah. up north there. Up there we did some of the um, more outdoorsy scenes and okay. some of those scenes on the road. And th- it's directed by Dean Alioto. Okay. And he's an editor in oh, town. Great. He's a very um, prominent editor oh, okay we both come from po- like i yeah. before i did this i was in post and he so. had a dream you know to make his first feature mm-hmm. and um like i said i mean he shot it so beautifully and i know i heard like horror stories of having to transfer the 8k up oh, to, yeah. you know sure. edit in 8k i mean yeah. he wanted to do it all like in the most highest resolution That's so massive it was sizes. really <laughs> really tough post production on that movie and you know it was uh it was a long time and kind of just tweaking it till it was just right. But when I saw it, I was like, wow, this is beautiful. It looks it very looks really, good. really pretty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, he should be very, very proud of, of the way that movie looks. And the story, I think it's just a timeless, you know, it's a timeless story of, you know, I'm not going to give it away. <laughs> mm. A ghost it's story. Very, it's, very, it's a haunted house. Yeah. It's a haunted house story. <laughs> if you like ghost hunting shows. Yes. I definitely. bet you do. <laughs> I bet you do. It's so funny because I was over, my, my sister was here for New Year's and there was one day we were watching this show called Ghost Brothers and <laughs> there's this, they get out the, shoot, what REM pod. The REM pod. Yeah. And, Holy. and my sister and her boyfriend who was also, they both go REM pod at the same time and I'm like, oh my God, what's the REM pod? Like, what? They're like, we don't know. We just get excited when they bring it out because they never but then they never tell you what it does they explain exactly what the REM pod does and I felt like I was meant to watch (laughs) see don't tell anybody what it no no, it's very it's very educational and it also yeah it 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 kind of pokes fun at this whole like obsession we have with haunted yeah like, like, like finding the source of the haunting like doesn't that ruin it? Like, don't we? We never want to know why the mm-hmm. house is haunted. We're paranormal investigators. I didn't get into this to hoax people. I know it sucks, but once we get renewed, we'll be able to continue hunting actual ghosts. So, what <laughs> film school did you go to? Michigan. Michigan. Yeah, we went to yeah. University of Michigan. Yeah. Oh, excellent. And that's where we met. Is that a graduate film. school or an undergrad program? No, it was, it was undergrad, undergrad, and it was more theory based, yes. to be honest, like theory and history rather than production. Yeah. So, when you talk about, like, oh, people wrote essays about Nightmare on Elm Street, I'm like, that's what we were studying. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's probably where the ones I read came mm-hmm. from. Though there was one really famous one that came from Berkeley, probably like in the early 90s. And I thought, I cannot believe any professor would accept an, a, you know, a PhD, yeah. pro, you know, pro, you know, thesis on Nightmare on uh-huh. Elm Street. I just thought it was ridiculous. Yeah. But then I read it and I'm like, oh, she's pretty good. She's got a point, you know, and they, you know, I never looked at the movie and analyzed it the way that people on the outside were, obviously. Mm -hmm. But now that I've read so much about horror and, you know, I love to read about Nancy, I see things that I don't think Wes actually Mm -hmm. was thinking about. Like consciously. I don't think he was consciously thinking this, but the fact that these people interpret it that way, I think is really fascinating because it tells you more about them than it does Wes. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It tells us more about our culture when someone talks about a final girl than Wes was really trying to say, because Mm -hmm. I think at that time, women like we're really still really trying to, um, you know, just have the strength to get through it, you know, and, and get beyond all of these, you know, difficulties that society is placing on us. And, and in a way, that's the final girl mentality that we are still, like, really trying to adopt as our own um, way of raising our daughters and way of acting as women, like, you know, face your fear. All of that comes out of this final girl you know, I, I, wanna, I don't want to call it a trope because mm-hmm. I think that trivializes it. But it's this rise of this character in literature and movies that means something to us because that's the same time that America has been trying to bring equality to women. And I went to the Women's March on Saturday, so I'm all like, woo, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, but it was super, I wanted to take my daughter to a march because she's in her 20s and hasn't 
you know, she's lived in Canada oh. for the last, she went to college in Canada. So she didn't get to participate in a lot of this American, you know, marching mm-hmm. and all of this. So I'm like, we're going down there. So we got down there and I wasn't sure whether she was really paying attention. The signs and everything are so fun to watch and seeing the people <laughs> do the chanting. And But then at one moment we were all marching and people behind us were doing a, one of those rhymes, you know, and I could tell like, it was just something like it was just something mm-hmm. that she was like, oh, this is the feeling that you have when you're all together with other people who all believe in the same thing that you do. Mm-hmm. And I really was like, wow, I didn't think it was going to have any effect on her at all. But I do think that she understood like there is a thing called solidarity mm-hmm. and there's a thing where you band together and it seems corny. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I know it's corny. You know, we're still doing this. And but you have to just set aside the fact that it's corny or it seems weird or you're self-conscious you feel self-conscious and just try to enjoy the moment and that's kind of like being in a horror movie because you know it's cheesy like yeah. i'd always tell wes this is so cheesy i can't <laughs> believe we're doing this there's a tongue coming out of the phone yeah. like yeah this is just so corny and and uh he would just say you know put it behind you like th- you are in the moment this is you and you need to like you need to be there and be in this reality and then as soon as you turn off that dumb part of your brain that is always judging and like telling you that it's stupid then you can be really invested in it and I learned very quickly with Wes that that other mindset that's throwing all that bullshit into your you know in into your consciousness I learned how to turn it off and at the end of the film or in the middle I remember we were outside the jail and I was stooping down and looking at Rod getting killed. I'm like, Rod, you know, wake up, wake up. And then after that take, Wes was like, you've really changed. I can tell, like, you just are totally 100% there for Nancy now. <laughs> like, you're not oh, it's so this, good to hear. <laughs> like, girl from Oklahoma who thinks being in a horror movie is stupid. Like, there was a moment when I just was like, nope, this is, this is, I got to go for the gold on this. Mm-hmm. And, uh giving actors the confidence to do that is not always easy, I think, Mm -hmm. because a lot of times it does look really cheesy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. There is something about his films that are so great is like everyone in them is like so sincerely like they're in the, you know, there's never that like, they're not looking at themselves from a distance. Yeah. And I think that's, I mean, not only a great lesson that I learned from Wes as an actor, but also in life like there's a lot of times you want to do something but that voice in your head just says oh you'll look stupid if you do that you know even if it's like helping an old lady across the street i mean even if it would be of great benefit there's this thing that we have and it's part of our cynicism it's part of our um like yeah i think cynicism is the one thing that it is Mm -hmm. where we just have been taught to be kind of too cool you know too cool for the room and you don't want to look like vulnerable Mm -hmm. and you don't want to look like you're maybe overly emotional so I do find that people hold back when their real heart and their instinct is telling them to do the right thing you Mm -hmm. know that's yeah kind of feel that I actually feel like that's something I I try to do in videos is to like not not be afraid to be goofy or silly or like right but I think that's why people love you because like there is nothing fake about it you know yeah and when you're pretending to be cooler than you are which like I'm so not cool like (laughs) like I'm my husband is so embarrassed by me half the time because I'm and my daughter too and I'm like hey how are you doing today like I'll just go up to random people and talk to them and they're like shut up (laughs) but I just feel so compelled to be who I am and and not always be judging it and trying to manage it and making it look cool. And it takes a while to learn that because I know in college I was definitely trying to be so, cooler than I am. Mm-hmm. And, Me too. You know, yeah. at a point I realized, you know, I'm not cool, but that's kind of cool if you right. can just accept that. Like, and luckily I'm a there's a lot of examples of it in TV and film now, but yeah. in the, there were very few like. Mm-hmm weird characters that weren't ridiculed Mm -hmm. and now yeah and now now there's some interesting characters that are kind of weird that we come to admire and that we come to like hope or they're going to succeed and are even more nerdy than they were before you know yeah (laughs) Yeah. oh well can i announce where i'm going to go this year for some of the shows oh yeah yeah um so 
so far this year, I'm going to go to Las Vegas okay. uh, for Days of the Dead. Oh, yeah. Which is going to be in March, March 20th, mm-hmm. uh, I think, that weekend. And then I already mentioned the film festival in Atlanta at the end of February. And then I'm doing a show I've never done before called Fan Fanboy Expo in Knoxville, Tennessee. Ooh. Mm-hmm. And that... I'm really looking forward to going to Tennessee because yeah. my best friend lives in Nashville. So I get to go to Nashville maybe beforehand. But that's um, in July, I believe. And then I'm going to one other place, and I can't remember where it is now. Are you doing Texas Frightmare again this year? No. 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 This year? We're going to we'll have our uh, table say, there. We have a table this yeah. year. It's, it's rare that you get invited two years in a row. Oh, okay. And I know I went last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was so, when we first met. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Aww. But I, yeah, so I'm going to do one more and I'll have to like just go to my website. It's I am Nancy dot info. Okay. And so I have, you know, if you want an autograph photo, you can get it there. I usually put announce all the places that I am going to appear. I announce that too. And then, um, and you the know, I, I have a too. blog so mm-hmm. you can like I, I took my short film to the New York Film Fest. I mean, to the Big Apple Film Festival. Mm-hmm. And so, I, you know, I write like about it and what happened. Oh, cool. And so I have a blog, which I really like to write. And um, yeah, it's I am Nancy dot info. And I think um, that's the best way to get there. Cool. Okay. So that has like appearances and stuff. Yeah, that has. Okay. And, it is um, it, it is kept up to date. Then, yes, I just edited it yesterday. Oh, great! And um, Heather Langenkamp dot info also might go there. Okay. I've been trying to okay. get my Heather Langenkamp oh, your, your sites, your but domains. somebody oh, I no, let it. I accidentally like... let it go. Like I don't know, ten years ago, and now I've never been able to get it oh. back. But it's so it's so expensive what they're asking for. Yeah, I just of feel course, because like they know worth it's it. worth a what lot. What is it to like you? domain squatting? Is that what? It yeah, was? yeah. Like, yeah, that's evil. I, it's, I know. Yeah, it's that's so some, evil. That's there was a story in oh my god, I forget. It was like a tech company where someone wanted this domain so badly they put out a hit on the guy who owned it. Oh my god. Oh it is the my craziest god. shit. Horror movie. Yes. Oh, it is the craziest true thing. But when you it's... see like as you can go and say okay what could I buy it for and then you see mm-hmm. you are like oh man that's yeah. like well cheaper to hire an assassin. It's cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I know. Crazy. Yeah that story is nuts. I think the guy lived too and that's why he was like oh, I'm coming so. back to get you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nuts. I know well your name is not your name. I mean I hate that part of being an actress is your name really doesn't you know it's like a brand it's not it's not you anymore and so i do go by heather anderson a lot like Mm -hmm. you know in my my regular life because i do feel like that name is still mine Mm -hmm. sure and um but yeah heather langenkamp i yeah i feel like it's this other person's name now (laughs) because they someone else owns the domain yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) someone else can be heather langenkamp for a while i guess (laughs) Oh. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, for, this was so well, great. I us. know. Thank you. And you are really a model for so many people out there. <laughs> you. And you couldn't be the you know better people. And I'm so glad that we met at the, at the well, not only at the show last year, but also at the Fox in the Box. I know. I'm yeah. so glad we did that. That I was know. so cool. And she's the brains. Yeah. yeah. First I hate to tell you that. No, I'd love to tell you that, actually. <laughs> He's the handsome oh, Ron, exactly. and she's the pretty brain. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> no shame. Well, good, uh, good. I mean, good luck on your on your procedure for your eyes. Oh, thank you. Yes, I got the thank LASIK you. and the vocal cords. Yeah. I'm doing it all before I, our wedding. There you go. Yeah. Oh, when are you getting married? October. October. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Mm-hmm. But excited? it's not a Halloween thing. Not Halloween. Thing. It just no. happens to be an Everyone thinks we're having a horror theme. I'm like, yeah, I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad because I, I think when you're my age and you look back at some of those photos, you're going to want to be like, Oh, in your dress, yeah. in your, in your dress. Sure. you don't want to be in zombie makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Though I have been to a couple of zombie weddings, I'm so sure I you have. Probably <laughs> a great time, actually. <laughs> but yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, congratulations. Thank well, you. actually, congratulations. Best wishes, or is it the other way? Oh, I didn't oh, know there were no. different. Uh, not, uh, I'm, I've learned so many little. So you're not supposed to say congratulations to the bride. I don't think. Oh. Really, you're supposed to say best wishes. Oh. I'm pretty sure. Like. Best wishes that this guy doesn't suck. Yeah. <laughs> Best wishes. No, like, I don't know. It seems so. Now now I'm questioning what my There's memory There's so many is. little things like planning this wedding where I'm like, 
I start thinking about the reasons we do things, and I'm like, this is so weird. I didn't know that fiance was spelled differently depending on if it was the woman or, or the man. man. Yeah. What? I get the extra I know. E. Alex didn't oh, know wow. either. Thank yeah. you, Alex. Yeah. The woman fiance has an extra E in it. I don't know why. Well, because the feminine in French, you know, oh, they have okay. an extra E, but I, I'm interested I think you're right, but I don't remember caring about that. <laughs> I didn't probably write it down. It was 30 years ago. I don't remember anything. I remember planning my wedding when I went to the DMV. I got a ticket, <laughs> and I was like, I, I, you know, David had proposed to me. I knew we were going to get married because well, our first idea was to get elope and go to Catalina and oh, just oh, elope. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we had our date planned. It was in March, and... We, you know, we're going to take the boat and we're going to stay in a hotel and just get married there. And um, the producers of Just the Ten of Us just came up to me and like, oh, we got you guys a singing gig at Dodger Stadium. You're going to sing the national anthem. So you need to be available on March 15th, which is like a, a – I know, it was – Oh, it was March sometime, and it was the same day we had planned oh, to go elope. No. Oh, no. And so we had to give up our eloping plans. And so instead, when I got a speeding ticket, probably on the way to Dodger Stadium, <laughs> um, I said, you know, I'm just going to plan the wedding. So I literally, while they're telling me all about the, the ro- rules of the road, yeah. I'm like, okay, we're going to have purple is going to be my color. <laughs> oh, and then so I'm like, funny. we're going to have this cake. And, and uh, so we, I just... Good use of time there. Yeah, Yeah. I just I called David afterwards and I said I've got the wedding all planned. So, (laughs) and and he was like, okay. I love that. Yeah, very good use of time. Yeah, (laughs) but I didn't want to make it too fussy, so it Mm -hmm. was a very simple affair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see your wedding pictures. Oh yeah. And um, congratulations, best wishes. Thank Thank you. you. And (laughs) yeah, you guys are killing it. Yeah, it (laughs) feels good. But yeah, thank you so much for joining us. It's uh, We're thrilled to be able to have guests like you on this podcast now. Yeah, this is awesome. You know, just started like a year ago or two years ago. Wow. The podcast two years ago, but Unreal. now we've had a more steady stream of guests and stuff, which is great. Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, I look forward to coming back someday. Yes, yes. absolutely. Okay. Definitely. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, next week we'll have, is next week Ghoulies that we're talking about Ghoulies? Let me see. Uh yes. Okay. I think. I don't know. I don't know. We we're, we're backlogging a, a ton in advance because of his my surgery. surgery so, so I think next week might. You'll be get cool, what so. we give you next week in the order <laughs> that you give it. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. But until then, I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and I'm Heather. Yeah, this has been the Dead Me Podcast. <laughs> <laughs>